What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here from Datadash and today is November 22nd of 2023. Well folks, I hope you all are having a fantastic day wherever you are because in today's video, I wanna spend some time to not only talk about the changes in Bitcoin's price as well as the altcoin market as we're seeing some pretty significant changes in trend here over the last 24 to 48 hours. But outside of that as well, I wanna talk about the big headline. That is the fact that CZ is stepping down from Binance and Binance has been able to reach a settlement with the Department of Justice or DOJ in the United States for $4.3 billion. I wanna talk about what this means, what really happened here, and talk a little bit about my forward outlook here on the crypto space, far beyond just Binance as an exchange, but more specifically on the changing tides in the crypto industry. We've got a lot to talk about here, so if you guys are interested, I hope you guys will drop a like if you enjoyed the video, and let's go ahead and kick things off. So I wanna start here with talking about Bitcoin. Bitcoin continues to slowly but steadily grind up along this line of support that has been in play here since back really in November, outside of the period of time here in August, all the way towards October where we broke through and we're able to reclaim it here as of late October. This beneficial price action that led us back to this trend was likely due to the seeding of the iShares uh, BlackRock Bitcoin ETF that they're hoping to get approved. And again, this is an important thing to note about guys if you're buying into the ETF hype mania, which is that so long as the B B BTC ETF has already been seeded here, those initial shares that have been created, unless there is more demand for more shares down the line, uh, essentially, uh, the beneficial price action that's going to come from a Bitcoin ETF has probably already played in here. That's likely what played out here throughout the months of October. So we're really going to need to see those ETFs go live here in the near future. And along with that, hopefully the demand for more ETF shares if we really want to see this kick higher. But irrespective of your opinion on that, whether you see eye to eye with me on that, the big thing I'd say is that it's best not to try to trade right now in the short term because we want to wait until we get clear trend confirmation of either breaking through this consistent resistance since early November, or if we snap below the line of support and get a fat red candle that signifies that the trend may be ready to cool down and test some of the prior lower ranges here that were prior resistance like 31,000 to 32,000. That would be my first range where I would consider, if anything, maybe starting to DCA a little bit. But I have to be honest with you guys, I'm not really again on that side that things are just gonna return charging back in the market here. I think very well, we could see a bounce at that range, but it's not maybe gonna be enough to sustain further higher prices. Just my general take on the market. But let's go ahead here and talk about the big headline. The big headline here is what's going on with Binance. There are two parts, CZ stepping down as CEO and passing over the role over to Richard Tang, who is now previously the global head of regional markets, now stepping in as the CEO of Binance as of yesterday. And this is a huge move here because CZ has been the previous CEO and co-founder of Binance since as far back as when it originated back in 2017. It's crazy to think, it's been well over six years now that CZ has been in that role and Binance has continued to grow as an exchange in the space. And outside of that as well, we also have the news coming out from the DOJ of the uh, REACH plea, uh, plea deal here, essentially at $4.3 billion and a resolution between the DOJ and Binance. I know a lot of people are seeing this headline and are worried and wondering, oh my God, what did Binance do to have to pay such a large fee? Uh, did they do what FTX did around coming link funds? Did they do some kind of criminal behavior with mil, you know, ill intention against their users? No, basically these fines here, again, I think everyone has a little bit of a subjective opinion, but I always try to view things for what they are, guys, and try to be realistic about the circumstances. Uh, while there was essential claims here that Binance was not complying with anti-money laundering standards and certain types of regulatory frameworks, at the same time, Binance as an exchange did not get caught for commingling user funds or basically doing what FTX did or what many other crypto providers did that left them falling underwater over this past year or two. No, they didn't engage in that. There was no proof of that. The only thing was that essentially Binance wasn't following certain regulatory frameworks and guidelines. And while they agreed to this, it's an important thing to realize, guys, that back in 2017 and even still today in so many ways, there is still not that much frameworks in place for a crypto exchange or a crypto business to understand how it actually functions and operates, let alone the United States, where this regulatory authority is coming from, providing that framework to go out there and actually do it in, say, the United States. They've made it incredibly difficult. And as we've seen with the SEC, 
while we have been pointing out that the SEC victories for XRP and some of the other projects in the crypto space, even Grayscale, were not so much victories, they are further proof that the SEC and other enforcement agencies are focused on basically regulating through litigation, not through working with congressional members to build new policies and new frameworks for these companies to actually thrive and operate on a global basis. There has been a clear message that regulators do not want crypto to succeed here, at least not in its current state. And I think this it really is an important topic to talk about, guys. Like, again, I think that the headlines causing a lot of fear and FUD around Binance are not justified. We spoke for months to a year now, and we've covered Binance since 2017, saying here that we're confident that the FUD was false. And it ended up being true here. The DOJ in this case did not find anything in relation to the commingling of funds, as CZ rightfully points out here in this case. And they didn't engage in any form of market manipulation. So this is a really good set of findings here. And I think it showcases that, again, there's a lot of unnecessary fun sometimes. Even as someone like myself who's been more bearish on this space, we stand up against that kind of stuff. And I hope that kind of signals that we try to be as little biased as possible here, even though, of course, everyone has their own opinion and they're going to see things through their own lens. But I want to talk a little bit now. I think Binance is in a great position going forward now that they've got this figured out and they have a process in place to work with regulators to continue operating in a functional manner. But the big thing I want to talk about here is CZ stepping down. Uh, you know, I had the opportunity to not only find about Binance early on in the crypto space, I think we were probably one of the biggest kind of early stage affiliates to Binance um, over the you know, back in 2017 as we were one of the largest cryptocurrency YouTube channels at the time. And I also, along with that as well, had the opportunity years later um, when I was hosting a panel at conferences like the one Cointelegraph hosted, I got to meet CZ personally, uh, along with people like Dao Hong Fei, who I'd spoken with many times before. And, you know, I have to say this, guys, look, at the end of the day, everyone has different opinions about people. And I, I'll make it very clear in saying that no one's perfect at the end of the day. But I have to say that CZ, I think, net overall was a pretty positive element for the crypto space. Binance as an exchange brought millions of users into the crypto space. And they ran a hell of a business over the past few years. And I think Binance still today is a massive titan in the crypto industry. I'm not trying to pay lip service at all to Binance here. I'm just letting you guys know here that at the end of the day, while you may disagree with certain things that Binance has done as an exchange, or maybe you don't see exactly eye to eye with CZ, he's one of the few CEOs alongside Brian Armstrong, uh, alongside as well, I would say Kraken. I mean, even the, I think the DOJ or one of the regulars recently found that Kraken, like a, a one of the best exchanges I can think about as well out there from a security perspective, they got caught commingling funds. So to have someone like CZ who's been so focused on a one-to-one -one backing, they now have proof of reserves out there for the exchange and actually trying to just build a great exchange business where the exchange can make a lot of money, users can hopefully capture into the opportunities that they want. I think it's, a, it's really nice to have someone who really over the last couple of years did that. And I have to say, you know, wherever CC goes and stuff, I'm, I'm wishing him the best. I'm wishing Binance as an exchange the best as well. Uh, the industry is better off having exchanges like Binance out there that offer a wide range of opportunities. And I hope over the long term here, we can get a better and clearer framework for regulation personally. Um, that's again, not to say that Binance hasn't made mistakes in the past, every company has, uh, but I'm just trying to reach a pretty solid middle ground here, guys. As someone who's again, been concerned about the failures of the industry, Binance has always been pretty solid about pioneering on decentralized exchanges and offering various services to users at pretty much the best cost out there in the market. So again, hats off to uh, CZ for what he's done over the last couple of years in building Binance. Hats off to the team at Binance for building what they have. And I'm really interested to see how this is gonna play out here for the industry. But I think this does speak to one really important thing. And I, I kinda wanna lead over to total three here, guys, because this is the kind of broader altcoin market. And it does pertain to exchanges, pertains to Binance, pertains to the whole crypto sector as a whole, and a lot of the innovative areas of the crypto space. I have to say this this feels like an end of an era to an extent, a changing of the guard in crypto right now uh, with the advent of the new ETFs coming up. And along with that as well, the, the really the sentiment and the feeling of this upward move since 2023. I know some people believe we are absolutely in a new cycle. Some people are more like ourselves who believe that this might be a short term window of relief and we've got a bit more pain and sideways price action to come. But I gotta tell you guys here, you know what I'm seeing here in the near term you know, everyone was really juiced up about the altcoin market the other weekend. And we told so many people over the last few weeks, be careful what you wish for. 
make sure to keep an eye and wait for the real trend to formulate. Wait for a solid breakout above prior resistance. Unfortunately, so many people get caught in the FOMO. And what do you know over the past, you know, basically past two weeks here, since the early part of November, we've been facing resistance at the same range we faced resistance at for total three, which is the altcoin market cap, it's excluding BTC and ETH. We're at the same range we were at back here in April, 2023, back in February, 2023, back in November, 2022. And we aren't able to even get above the same price level we had back in August of 2022, when we sold our altcoins at around a $440 billion market cap, basically 10% premium for where they're at now. So I gotta tell you guys, we timed our altcoin trades very well there. And I know some people say, oh, but you could have bought, you could have bought here, you could have bought there, bought there. Guys, I don't care about trading in an accumulation channel. And anyone who's telling you that a 100% move on Bitcoin or trading in these accumulation ranges for altcoins is like, you gotta get in on that or you're gonna miss out on generational returns is just lying to you or they don't understand crypto markets. It's as if they've never traded in a crypto market before. And I'm sorry, I know some of you might've been buying in those lows and made some money and you wanna parade it and that's awesome. All the more to you, that's awesome if you bought at those lows, that's great. But to tell other people that you know they've missed on generational returns is, is just a flat out lie. It's a lie, guys. Where you make money in altcoins is not in the accumulation range. It's when you get a clear defined breakout at a level not seen before in the past year, year and a half, especially for one that's been as flat as this, and you build an entry and you ride the wave into the next bull market. That is where you make the returns. You don't need me to tell you that. We're looking at the logarithmic chart here and it will clearly show you in percentage terms, the gains are not made through these little short-term channels where there's constant resistance. It's made when you buy and you ride the wave. So that's why I keep emphasizing here. I know a lot of people feel FOMO when they see a few altcoins like FTT token, which I mean, if, if that's the market leader, if Solana and Avalanche and these plays are really gonna be the market leaders, they don't excite me. And uh, I, I wish all the best to those who are really chasing that bullish narrative, because if we take a look at the fundamentals, guys, it's a different story. It's a different story. And don't believe that those two are separate. You're going to need some kind of narrative. You're going to need some traction to get people really excited and to get those quote unquote institutional investors who want to buy in for prices to continue moving higher beyond just an accumulation range. I only say that with such confidence to be honest with you guys and transparent. You are going to need a lot more liquidity to kick up here and kick to new all-time highs and for altcoins to really kick off a new bull market. That's not me telling you that. That's just the history of analyzing stablecoin liquidity and its relevancy. And if it's not gonna be stablecoin liquidity, boy, are we gonna need Bitcoin to go through a mega rally and we're gonna need some other entrant of liquidity from the crypto space other than stable coins. Because right now, guys, we're just not seeing it here. One of the most fundamental metrics you could use is developers contributing to each of these ecosystems. And I'm not just bashing like some alternative L1s. Ethereum set in a peak here back on March 1st of 2023, 462 developers now down towards around 315 on a monthly, a core developer contributor basis. There's some significant cutbacks. Solana, take a look at developers here down from its peak in November of 2021, at the absolute peak of euphoria in the crypto space from 161, now down to 28. Avalanche as well, right? Avalanche has been more neutral here, right? Holding out around 43 developers. It's been about the same position as 2021. Never really grew to the extent that, say, Solana did during that period of time. But if you take a look here, you know, we're always seeing like the things that are getting people really juiced up, just like purely like overdone metric changes, like 300K transactions to 5.8. And many people are wondering, oh my gosh, is Avalanche like having some new killer DeFi application? Do they have something that's really sending markets higher? No, what it is, is basically a copycat of ordinals. It's just basically inscriptions, transaction inscriptions on Avalanche. And I'm pretty sure that if that's what's really causing these spams here, uh, even if you're talking about these swaps and the changing of hands of these uh, inscriptions, I'm pretty sure there's not really 5.8 million transactions worth of demand for these inscriptions. And this looks to me like what we saw on Solana the other day, as we rightfully pointed out here, on a network that essentially has practically zero to low cost transactions. You can spam the chain. There is really no like nothing that prevents you from creating artificial traffic. 
because there's not much of a cost to do it. And this is, again, something I, I constantly emphasize, guys. It's why I track the more fundamental things, like core developers, I like to track, and uh, you know, along with that as well, the TVL here, not in the dollar term, but the actual amount of coins that are being stored in the exchange. I mean, really, we've seen over the past couple of weeks here, actually past couple months in September, less soul being stored on DeFi protocols. We've seen it as well. If we take a look at the amount of AVAX tokens here, again, a huge drop here of AVAX tokens, likely going straight to exchanges to be dumped. And it's not just these plays that I'm looking at. I'm looking at the core devs of Polygon from 50 down towards 21, less than half of the original contributors. And if we take a look at TVL here for Matic here on DeFi protocols, we can see it's been absolutely flat here since February of 2023 at its relative lows. No new significant process, no new amount of Matic being acquired and deposited on DeFi protocols for providing liquidity, for trading pairs, for getting yield or generation on the platform. Take a look at BSC, all right? 102 developers on Binance Smart Chain down towards 27. Again, I'm not here to bash any particular chain. It's just taking a look at the fundamentals people are not staking these tokens on DeFi protocols. Uh, they're, they're not, you know, participating actively and, you know, not only developing new applications as much as they used to, but along with that, we're just simply not seeing the same kind of participation here, right? Stable coin liquidity down from around 12, uh, $13 billion down here towards 5 billion. Arbitrum and Optimism are two of the ones that are sort of okay. They've been on a still a broader uptrend uh, since starting out. But I would say here, I'm curious to, to figure out where DeFi Llama you know, got their data here in regards to Arbitrum. Uh, and not to mention from 53 to 36 devs, still a huge cutback here. We can see Optimism as well, getting a little bit of a drop off, but still holding strong. So I'm not gonna really bash, like when things look good, but these two look like they're actually kind of holding up here. And I think that makes sense. Arbitrum and Optimism have not really had their big moment yet, but they are coming out at pretty high, fully diluted value market caps in a market that is questionable as to whether or not it's got the steam to continue. And I take a look back here at prices, guys. You know, a lot of people will, will tell you, oh, you're, you're missing out, Nick, and uh, you know, Nick's bearish, and therefore I'm gonna go long on the market and stuff. Like, it, these kind of childish, like, remarks. Well, I'm happy that people feel like they, they wanna average even more into Solana uh, after it's gone from around $18 to 55 to you know, 65 bucks. Go ahead, go in. We'll see who wins in the long term here. But I gotta tell you guys, I would not be buying, and I say this as a friend here, buying Solana going into one of the most significant ranges of resistance for Solana, which was prior support and the first half of 2022. And also along with that as well, now that Solana has caught up and is basically from top to its current price at around the same this uh, percentage decline from other altcoins. So by all means, if you guys really like Solana, if you feel like I'm missing something on the fundamentals, have at it. Um, but I have to tell you guys, I'm not going into it here at this price range, nor am I going in on Avalanche, which now is showing very clear, more frequent periods of time where not only red candles on volume are picking up, but clear distribution waves here that every single time there's some kind of wave of buyers coming in, they're getting distributed on, on a multi-hour, multi-day time frame. So, Again, the price action doesn't look really exciting to me. If we can't even clear through this resistance, guys, what does that tell you about our market standing? Now, I'll be honest, we haven't completely just fallen off a cliff yet, right? We haven't had that big red candle over like nine, 10% down. That really signals, hey, the trend is over. So there's still maybe a chance here, but I'd much rather wait until I see confidence in that trend, making sure that we actually get a close, a weekly close above this range at 400 to 410 billion. We have yet to do that. Now, there is one play that I'm interested in, guys, at the moment. Um, and it's not so much that I, I fundamentally believe that the narrative has a lot of like value creation potential. Uh, I think other people might believe that. I'm just gonna be candid with you guys and saying what I, what I think on the market. But I do believe one of the narratives of this cycle as it has to do with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the big focus. We've seen that very clearly. And I think things that are, uh, you know, if I were to give kind of like a hint to one narrative that I think actually has some weight to it, anything that's building on top of Bitcoin and adding new use cases to the most valuable and liquid protocol out there in the world, whether you agree or disagree with its technology, or if you like Bitcoin or it may not be where you're allocated, Bitcoin is the largest protocol. The ETF narrative is the only thing driving the crypto space right now. 
I can't think of a single narrative outside of that that's really got people excited. And therefore, Bitcoin ordinals are a really important talking point to continue focusing on. And you can see that the price here, the price uh, move that we had here, is looking like a clear, uh, for me, a clear ICO uh, kind of, in this case, uh, initial token offering uh, reversal, right? And this is an IPO reversal in traditional equity speak. But when you essentially have an initial listing, it unloads, you get a lot of the weak hands out, and you start to build a foundational base. You build back up here towards those relative highs. You face some short-term resistance. Another way to view this is a cup and handle, right? You have the cup and price. Uh, you essentially build out the handle here, move lower. And what do you know here on one of our key indicators that we like to utilize, Lux Algo, we can see that the buy side band, the potential support band, is really hovering in this range around 17, 80, all the way down here towards 15 bucks, which is also the prior range of resistance back in the past. So this to me is really looking like it might be one of the plays that I wanna watch. But if you guys are interested in spotting other potential buy the dip opportunities in some of these plays, if you believe the altcoin market is moving forward, or maybe in the future, if we break through some of these levels and start to trend lower, and you wanna know when it might be an opportune period of time to short on some short-term relief rallies, then I definitely recommend you guys check out the Lux Alco Indicator Suite. There's a reason that this is lining up here, guys. These indicators are incredibly powerful here if you know how to use them properly. And after these kind of big moves, this is definitely what you can use these indicators for to spot those next entry opportunities because those dips from 28 to around 15 can give you a great opportunity to catch some of those big movers and not be buying it at the absolute top, hoping and praying that it's gonna come all the way back up and break to new highs. So if you guys are interested in checking out Lux Algo, who's been one of our long-term partners here on the channel, one of the few actual indicator suites that I would say have some weight in the market and are actually really exciting and powerful to use across not just crypto, but also potentially as well in the stock market and a whole range of other assets, which you can utilize them for. If you're using TradingView, I highly recommend you guys check out Luxalga at the link down below in the description. You guys can get over 60% off utilizing our link down below. You don't need to put any discount code and it's already gonna be applied. And there's only about two days and 18 hours left for this, guys. So if you guys are interested to grab that, definitely consider it. And you guys will definitely be able to use it on a whole range of different types of assets. And you'll get access not just to the indicator we showcased here, but a whole range of other things like their price uh, price action concepts indicator and a whole range of other ones. So anyways, that's it for today's video, guys. I rambled on a pretty good amount here, uh, but I just in summary wanted to say that this is definitely gonna be an interesting period of time here for altcoins. It's an interesting period of time here for Bitcoin. We're going to, through bull or bear market, through optimistic period of times or negative period of times, continue giving you guys the unfiltered view on what I see in the market here. And if you guys did enjoy this piece of content, consider dropping a like. It's a great way to support the channel. But until the next one, everyone, I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay safe, trade smart. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.